It's therefore time for a member statement. The member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak about the strike at Cami Automotive Plant. This plant employs thousands of people in my community, people who are worried about the future of the plant and their jobs. I share their concerns and I support their efforts to keep those jobs in Ingersoll. In fact, last week I asked the Premier to change her government policies that have already driven 1,300 jobs out of Oxford. The number one issue I hear on the picket line, heard on the picket line this weekend, and the number one concern when I talk to CAMI employees is keeping those jobs in Ingersoll. I've heard from employee after employee who is suffering because of this strike. They are worried about their future. We make quality cars in Ingersoll because we have hardworking and skilled workforce. Those workers shouldn't have to worry about companies moving their jobs because of high hydro costs, taxes, and red tape. While we as MPPs are not part of the contract negotiations, government should be doing everything they can to keep those jobs in Ontario. So I want to again ask the government to ensure companies like CAMI can succeed so they can provide stable jobs for thousands of people. I want to once again encourage both sides to try and settle this as quickly as possible for the sake of those employees. And I want to say to the workers, I support your efforts. I understand how difficult this is for you, and I will continue to, to fight to keep those jobs in Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Speaker, yesterday more than 200 friends of Arnold Amber got together to celebrate his remarkable life. Arnold was a journalist. He started out as a correspondent for the Reuters News Service in Africa and Europe but he was best known for his work behind the scenes at the CBC. For many years, he was the executive producer of CBC News Specials. That covers most of the federal elections since the 70s, many provincial ones, the royal visits, breaking news coverage at all hours of the day and night. Arnold Amber was also a fierce advocate for social justice and human rights. For 25 years, he was the president of the Canadian Journalists for Free Expression. He served as the president of the CBC branch of the Canadian Media Guild. Hundreds of CBC employees owe their full-time jobs and their pensions to Arnold Amber. He fought to do away with contract positions and turn them into full-time jobs. I served on the CMG's national executive with Arnold, and we spent 10 years together on the international executive of our union. He was our Canadian director and a warrior for fairness be it at our small-town newspapers right across the country, or at many of our dailies, or at TVO, the Canadian Press, or the CBC. Speaker, some say fittingly he passed away in Labor Day. So to Phyllis, Janine, Gillian, and David, thank you for sharing Arnold's precious time with us as union family. I take pride in saying I love the guy. He was a friend, a mentor, and he certainly left his mark on Canadian journalism, human rights, and the fight for fairness for us all. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, this member from Beaches East Shore. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I rise today on behalf of my constituents to celebrate and acknowledge Jason Bogopol, who was recently named the 2017 Beaches Citizen of the Year by our Beach Metro News. Mm -hmm. Now, Jason began volunteering well over a decade ago when, somewhat paralyzed by feelings of helplessness, he channeled his challenges with mental well-being into volunteerism. It started, Speaker, with a can of goof-off when he went out to the community and started taking graffiti and other things off of posts and graffiti and recognized that he was actually now doing something positive in the neighbourhood and it empowered him. And while out there doing that, he met Bob Murdoch. Bob is another great stalwart in our community, working at Centre 55 as chair of that board. And he brought Jason onto the board at Centre 55 and, and Jason went on to become the chair of that board for almost nine years. And Jason has worked on a whole long list of other initiatives with exceptional organizations in the beach and some that he started himself. Between 2009 and 15, he served on a board of a local service agency, Neighborhood Link Support Services. And he founded a Beaches Mental Wellness Group, a community-based wellness support group that has supported him as much as it has the dozens of other people that he's touched in his life. And what Jason has repeatedly found in his voluntary activism, it's not about just helping others, because in helping others, you're helping yourselves. 
So Jason was awarded the 2017 Beach Citizen of the Year Award, surrounded by other recipients on Sunday at, uh, down at Ubark. And I want to ask all of us, in recognition of all the great volunteers in our own community, that Jason, as an example, thank you so much for the service you do to our community. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, further member statements. The member from Nipissing. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would, I'm rising today uh, for uh, the Franco-Ontarian Day. September 25th is a moment for the Nipissing riding uh, to celebrate our rich Francophone heritage on the September 25th. It has been named officially. Franco-Ontarian Day in 2010. A few years before, uh, the Franco-Ontarian drop flag uh, has been raised for the first time at, in Sudbury at the Univers Laurentian University on September 25, 1975. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy that young political science student, Michel Dupuis, is the one who created that flag. He, came, he comes from North Bay in my riding. The other person was a history professor at the Laurentians University, Gaetan Gervais. The green and white of the Franco-Ontarian flag represents summer and winter. It's a per perfect combination and a perfect symbol. Let's celebrate that beautiful Franco-Ontarian Day all together. Thank you very much. In North Bay and Sudbury and look up Lavac, you'll see there's a lot of names up there. So I just want to know. Further member statements, the member from London West. Speaker, I rise today to share with this House a tale of two cities. The first city is experiencing a boom in real estate and construction and digital creative, with 10 firms listed among the fastest growing Canadian companies in 2017. Collectively, these firms are Kane, Voices.com, Big Viking Games, Big Blue Bubble, Zoomerin, a Digital Echidna, Diagnostics Biochem, StarTuck.com, HR Downloads, and Canada Tube Form grew their revenues more than 600 per cent over the last five years. The second city was also ranked among the top cities in Canada. It came third in the country and second in Ontario for the highest rate of opioid hospitalization last year, as well as the highest proportion of children living in low income. And while other Canadian cities saw 10 per cent growth in median income over the last decade, this city saw a drop of 2.1 per cent. Median income is now second lowest among Ontario urban centres. The city reported the lowest labour market participation participation rate of any major Canadian municipality, with about one-quarter of working-age residents not working and too discouraged to look for work. What are these two city speakers? They are both London, Ontario, and these statistics paint an alarming picture of an economy that is leaving too many people behind. Clearly, Speaker, we can do better. Londoners deserve a city that is both innovative and inclusive, and a government that is committed to helping achieve that goal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled to tell you about a spectacular two-day festival that was held in my riding of Kingston and the Islands on the 9th and 10th of September. The annual Garrison Kingston Family Fest celebrates our amazing military community and their families. And without question, their hard work, dedication, and special commitment to protecting our nation and its security is of paramount importance and deserves both recognition and celebration. The central theme this year was Canada's 150th anniversary, and 25,000 people came out to enjoy the many attractions in and around the sports centre—Fort Henry, CFB Kingston, our Armed Forces Base. 
From learning about Kingston's rich military history to watching the snowbirds soar across Kingston's skies, there was something for everyone. They had a fully operational Griffin helicopter and a completely refurbished Sherman tank. We also had our very own Invictus Games relay, which gave participants of all ages a chance to engage with some healthy, in some healthy competition and win prizes. The Great Canadian Rock Show, which fe featured Trooper, one of Canada's most celebrated bands, among the others, was sold out and had the crowd rising to its feet during an energetic and, and engaging performance. The list goes on. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the staff, management and volunteers team at CFB Kingston, Via Rail, the City of Kingston, Kingston Police, Kingston Transit, Fort Henry, as well as the vendors and sponsors who made this event a success. Kingston and the Islands treasures the military community, and events like the annual Garrison Kingston Family Fest gives us the opportunity to recognize and celebrate everything they do to keep our nation safe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Bruce Gray owns Sound. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask you to ask consent of the House if I could proudly wear my Invictus pin, which is a part of my... The member from uh, uh, Bruce Gray owns Sound is seeking unanimous consent to wear the Invictus pin. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. Member? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to rise as the PC Party's accessibility critic and recognize the opening of the 2017 Invictus Games a unique competition to commemorate and honour the perseverance and determination of our wounded and injured soldiers and veterans who have overcome tremendous odds and continue to inspire us through this adaptive sporting event. And so, as we welcome 550 soldiers and veterans from 17 nations to take part in the Games this weekend, we also open our hearts and minds to their many personal stories of courage that display only the very best of the human spirit. I encourage all members to follow the games and the personal stories from Team Canada that showcases 90 members from the Royal Canadian Navy, the Canadian Army and the Royal Canadian Air Force, and veterans as well as our fellow comrades from Afghanistan, Iraq, Italy, Jordan, Australia, Denmark, Estonia, France, Romania, Netherlands, Georgia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, United States, Germany and the Ukraine. They are all our allies and those with whom our troops have recently fought alongside during the war in Afghanistan and in the rebuilding of Iraq. In the words of Prince Harry, and I commend him for following in his humanitarian causes like his late mother, Diane, Princess Diana. And I quote, time and time again, competitors from around the world tell me that sport has saved them, that the Invictus Games have given them a new lease on life, and that to represent their country again with fellow comrades is something that they could only have dreamt of while lying in hospital. These competitors, and again I quote, have cheated death and come back stronger than before, Prince Harry said, and they're pr proving to the world anything is possible when you choose to be an unconquerable soul. It's a forward-moving perspective and one I strongly support. To echo the lines from the poem Invictus that is the inspiration behind the name of the Games, in the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced or cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I ask all of us to wish these unconquerable souls only the best at the games. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa, Vanier. Oui, Monsieur le Président, Mr. Speaker, today is uh, the Franco-Ontarian Day. It's the opportunity for all of Ontario to celebrate the contribution of the Franco-Ontarian community. I would like today to underline the vitality of uh, the Francophone institutions in my writing of uh Vanier. We have the Montfort Hospital with the expansion of its services and its uh, huge uh, investments in research. Uh, we have also community organizations uh, that meet the needs of the newly arrived. Uh, we have two uh, uh, Catholic, uh, two uh, school boards uh, that meet the needs of uh, the new learners in a div diversified manner. Their programs are uh, there to meet the needs of meet the needs. Uh, we have Cité Collégiale, uh, whose, need, whose programs meet the needs of the new uh, labor needs. And I would like to mention, of course, we will have a new Francophone university, but we also have uh, the University of Ottawa, uh, which is a pillar of research on Francophone matters. There is a lot of energy in our Franco-Ontarian community in Ontario, and this energy will continue to contribute in a relevant manner. It will be innovative in the Ontarian society. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further members? Thank you. Member from Haldeman, Norfolk. Yeah, Haldeman, Norfolk. Last one. Abundance of fairs and festivals unique to our diversified rich farm heritage, ranging from uh, Dunville's Mudcat Festival, Port Rowan's Bay Fest, Charlotteville's uh, Donnybrook, 
Delhi's Fall Fest. We find something to do every weekend leading up to uh, Waterford, capping it off with Pumpkin Fest. So the week leading up to Thanksgiving presents uh, two great fairs, Caledonia and the Norfolk County Fair and Horse Show. Norfolk Fair will attract up to 160,000 people, ranks the fifth largest, competing with the likes of the CNE and the Royal Winter Fair. Here at Queen's Park and elsewhere, I get asked uh, which country star or band is attending the stage, or cabbage rolls on the menu, where do I get a Dixie dog, who grew the biggest pumpkin this year. Caledonia, Norfolk, all the fairs and festivals take us back to our younger days. Again, the Dixie dogs, the candy flasks, uh, caramel corn, the lights, the music, the buzz of the crowd. Following Caledonia, the Norfolk Fair offers Young Canada Day, Warriors Day, country stars Tim Hicks and Chad Brownlee, monster trucks, demolition derbies, the livestock barns, of course, as well as beautiful show and the heavy horses. So I invite everybody down to Norfolk Haldeman, come down and take in some of the best fairs in the province. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.